Hi. Um, you all might have suffered from complexity using Bosch. As you might know, I work on the OpenStack CPI team, and I'm going to share some, a short story about how we sh have our share of suffering from the inside, like developing Bosch. Um, let me start with a really short overview. It's not a complete overview and nothing really simplified of, uh, of Bosch. Um, and I'm concentrating on the registry here. It's like that's going to be used to, to provide metadata that's, that has to be updated during a lifetime of the VM. Think about mount points for persistent disks. Um, the flow is kind of the director tells the CPI to tell the registry to prepare some value that the agent will collect at some point in time and then do action on that as a context. So I have three features that we wanted to develop or have developed actually. Um, this one rather simple, straightforward. We wanted to use domains of Keystone v version 3. Um, Look rather simple. Some some twiddling, some if, because we want to support v2 and v3 and their path for authentication changed, but then just add domain, obviously, and tenant is now called project again, but some rather simple things. The implementation was straightforward. We committed it. The pipeline was green. It just didn't work. I'll come to that later. I have another feature, human readable VM names. Like in AWS on the console, you see things like runner slash zero, runner slash one. On OpenStack, that was VM dash some UUID. Not really helpful, and we wanted to change that. Unfortunately, the agent on OpenStack stem cells is configured to actually use the name to look up metadata in the registry. So that was a bit harder, but we found some workaround pipeline went green. It just didn't work. Um, that's the last feature that we worked on. That's about custom CA certs. Think about a private OpenStack installation using self-signed uh, certificates. You might still want to really use SSL validation, and that's a mechanism to actually provide your custom CA cert. Um, yeah, that was pretty straightforward again, like Keystone v3. The pipeline was green. It just didn't work. So it was this rather innocent looking line of code that um, is responsible for checking that the agent is actually just able to get the settings for his VM. Um, and you know, the CPI is the abstraction for IAS, right? Mm, not quite. The registry is actually calling OpenStack on its own. So we had to um, do the V3 stuff there for Keystone, the CA certs, and there was some uh, problem um, finding, finding uh, content for that, for that VM. Um, sadly, this is only called if um, the call is made uh, without authentication, and guess how our pipeline was configured. <laughs> it was configured with basic authentication. So it went green with that because the check was just, see the if remote IP was just switched off. Um, so, okay, maybe that was humorous or not. I'm coming to some seriousness. <laughs> um, not, not as good as you, Dr. Nick. Um, it's, an, it's an unnecessary layer of indirection, and it's actually a single point of failure that wouldn't be necessary. Like, the, the director could just talk to the agent directly. It's a major break of abstraction, so you have actually subclasses of some Ruby class in there for AWS and for OpenStack. And as you've seen in the presentation about the Google CPI, new, newly created CPIs are actually shying away from, from using it and starting to use that. Um, let me close with that uh, quotation of Kato the Older um, that wanted to have Cartago destroyed. Um, I'm aware of that this probably took Kato quite some time to get it through the, through the Roman Senate. He said it whenever he had a speech in there, and then the Third Punic War took quite some time. But on the other hand, we have it actually on Bosch notes, like plans for a, for a Bosch CPI version 2 that would get rid of registry and NATs, so we should just do it. That's all from me. Thanks for listening.